Yeah, hi. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about the heart bleed bug that was very uh, much written about in media last week. Uh, it is basically a programming error in this library, OpenSSL, and uh, hmm, there is an XKCD comic explaining how it works. Basically, in this uh, SSL protocol, and uh, that is used, for instance, for encrypted web, like uh, HTTPS. But that's not the only place where it's used. It's also used uh, in other things like uh, OpenVPN, IPsec, and uh, so on, as an MP. Uh, but it basically works like this. Uh, it's a, an extension to the uh, TLS protocol where the server sends over uh, maybe one word. Uh, the client sends one word to the server and says, well, okay, this is potato, it's six letters. And the server responds with potato, six letters. Client uh, sends over letter, bird, four letters. Uh, server rep responds with four letters. Birds. And this is basically just to make sure that they both are alive and the connection is still up. And now, if the client wants to cheat, it can sense the wrong size. It sends over hat, which is three characters, but says that it's 500 characters. So this is part of the protocol and the server, the bug in the protocol was that the server didn't check the bounds. So they didn't check that the string was um, like... Uh, how long the string was. So the string is actually one of the three characters and the rest 497 characters will be taken off the memory of the computer that is running the server, uh, which in this case happens to be, uh, uh, I think it's the heap. And here uh, it might co contain sensitive information, in this case correct cohoba st as a password, and it's from an uh, older XKCD comic, it's, uh, uh, which is about choosing, choosing passwords in a safe way. So they recommend to use a password phrase, and like correct horse battery staple, I think that's what they're referencing to here, if you're eagle-eyed. And if you want to try this, you can go to this uh, exploit d database, which has uh, a lot of exploits, and you can see even on the front page, there's one here, which is in C, but I'm going to use an other one, which is even easier. This one, which is written in Python. Uh, all right. So, okay. Here is the C one, and here is the Python one. So you just run it like this, Python, Heartbleed, and the IP address of the device. And I didn't tell you what device. We're going to use this device. It's a uh, um, typical embedded device for the industry. It has little strange contacts. Here yeah, is the power, so I'm just going <laughs> to 24 volts and remove one, one of them. So now there it has no power. And when I plug it in, it should start booting. I actually have a serial console here. You can see what's happening. It's running Linux, yeah. And I have intentionally put uh, an older version of the firmware onto this switch, so that is vulnerable for a heartbeat uh, problem. The latest version, which is available from the homepage from the company which makes these uh, switches and routers, um, the latest version is uh, has an updated OpenSSL which is not vulnerable. Anyway, uh, to find, you can use a tool like nmap. Okay, I can maybe do that first. So if, if I run nmap here uh, on my local subnet and just search for devices, this has port 443 open, which is the HTTPS. Uh, I find only one and it's this device. So, now I run this Python script 
and just put the IP address as the only argument. Wow, it's vulnerable, and I can add a less here. So I can see it's. Mm, I get a piece of the heap, and there's some random stuff here. It's not. Doesn't look like something sensitive, and there's just zeros. Okay, so that's because I just booted it, so there's not much in memory. But if I do something else, if I actually go to this one and write HTTPS to make sure I'm running and log in, I changed the username is the default admin, but I changed the password to secret. Okay, so now I'm logged in. Now something has happened. The device has served a web page and it has done the authentication for my login. So if I run this Heartbleed script again, if I'm lucky, it's actually stuff from the authentication uh, on the heap. And as we can see here, yeah, this like, it looks like an HTTP uh, header and it has a cookie. And the cookie contains sensitive information, in this case the session ID, uh, which is something that is um, only valid for this session. And uh, this, uh, if you have this session ID, then you can hijack one. So that's a uh, session hijacking, and even more serious, you can see the authentication uh, mechanism actually left both the username and the password in clear text lying on the heap. So, uh, this is like a proof of concept that this heartbeat can lead leak sensitive information. Not just in theory, but in practice. Uh, so, that was basically what I wanted to say. Uh, and uh, if you want to search, yeah, uh, yeah. one more thing. Uh, if you have a server, you, you have some package manager, uh, w which will update automatically the software, so we will get new version with bug fixes. But these kinds of embedded devices, uh, which typically used in the industry, uh, <coughs> or uh, like, or, uh, what do you know, uh, power plants, or you know, like water plants, or everywhere they are not updated as frequently. So if they are connected to the internet, it might be a problem because they run old firmware with known bugs in them, like for instance this Heartbleed bug. And you can actually search for these kind of devices in, uh, with a search engine that's called Shodan here. <coughs> so this is this kind of devices that Shodan finds are actually pretty dangerous because they often ha don't have updated firmware. So th there's old known bugs in, in the software running on these devices. This particular device, uh, the company making it has uh, released updated firmware, but you have to install it manually to be safe. And I know that many other companies, even big ones like Cisco, they haven't even released new firmware, which has the open SSL problem fixed. So, um, yeah, th this is going to be a problem for a while, especially for this type of embedded devices. If you run like the desktop and uh, OS 10, uh, you can go to App Store and update your software here, and, uh, and then you're okay. And uh, I actually, I think uh, OS 10 was never vulnerable to this bug, but it's vulnerable to other bugs. And if you run Windows, you can run Windows um, Update or uh, on other on Unix, they have like on BSD have the ports system. Uh, Linux have different package managers like <coughs> Emerge on Gentoo or uh, Pacman on Arch Linux or uh, APT on Ubuntu and Debian. So it's actually pretty easy to update your software, but not on embedded devices. Then it's going to be maybe a little bit more hassle to update it. And as a result, uh, there, there are going to be more embedded devices that are 
still vulnerable out there.